Change management handles change to service asset and configuration item, or CI baselines, across the whole service lifecycle. The purpose of the change management process is to control the lifecycle of all changes and help in implementing beneficial changes with minimum disruption to IT services. The objective of change management is to respond to business and IT requests to ensure alignment of services with business needs. Ensure that changes are introduced in a controlled manner, optimizing business risk. Ensure timely and successful implementation of changes to meet business needs and use standard processes and record every change. The scope of change management is to handle changes to architecture, tools, metrics, processes, and documentation. Addition, removal, or modification of a service or a CI or associated documentation and changes to any of the five aspects of service design. In the next screen, we will discuss the change model. The image illustrates the different activities in a change management process. The change management process starts with the request for change or RFC. The RFC is logged in the change management system and the information is captured and tracked to completion. An initial review is performed to filter RFCs that are incomplete or incorrectly routed. The RFCs are then assessed, which may require the involvement of the Change Advisory Board or the Emergency Change Advisory Board for business justification, impact, cost, benefit, and risk associated with the changes. Next, the change is authorized by the change manager. The change requester, in turn, will ensure that they have the approval in the following three areas. Financial, what is it going to cost, and what is the cost of not doing it? Business, what are the consequences to the business both of implementing and not implementing the change? And technology, what are the consequences to IT infrastructure? Following this, Change management coordinates the work performed with multiple checkpoints and forwards approved changes to the relevant product experts to build and test the changes and create and deploy releases. Finally, the implemented changes are reviewed in a post-implementation review or PIR. If the change is successful, it can be closed. A key activity of change management is the assessment of the change request either by the change manager or the change advisory board. In the next screen, we will discuss the change advisory board or CAB. The seven R's of change management, a set of seven questions forming a quick checklist to assess the impact and risk to benefit ratio of a change are, who raised the change? What is the reason for the change? What is the required return? What are the risks involved? What resources are required to deliver the change? Who is responsible for building, testing, and implementing the change? What is the relationship between this change and other changes? In the next screen, we will understand how the change management process is measured. A metric, or a key performance indicator, or KPI, is used to measure and report performance to manage a process, IT service, or activity. KPIs are selected in a way that ensures efficiency and cost-effectiveness. Some of the metrics used in change management are for compliance, decrease in the number of unauthorized changes, decrease in the number of emergency changes, whether the integrity of the CIs is maintained, for effectiveness in delivering value, increase in the percentage of changes implemented that meet customer requirements, Reduction in disruptions, defects, and rework. Reduction in failed or backed out changes. Decrease in the quantity of incidents attributable to any change. For efficiency. Benefits gained, that is the value of the change compared to the cost incurred to implement the change. Average time to implement the change by urgency, priority, or type. Increase in the percentage accuracy of change estimates. In the next screen, we will discuss the challenges in implementing and practicing the change management process. 
The key challenges faced by change management are business pressure. There's pressure to immediately implement any new business process initiatives in the organization. Incomplete and inaccurate configuration management system leading to inaccurate change assessment. Technical function areas working in silos. Lack of communication channels between the technical teams and other teams involved in service delivery make it difficult to execute a change. Misunderstanding of emergency changes. Sometimes, the technical team may misunderstand between urgency of implementing a change and emergency changes. Scalability in a large organization is a challenge as some CIs may not be deployable in the existing infrastructure, making it difficult for the change management team to implement the change. Vendor or contract compliance. In case vendors have a change management system of their own, they may resist from the change management process in the business organization. In the next screen, we will discuss the service asset and configuration management process. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.